Most wooden shoes are made of poplar, easy to carve and generally free of knots. So it makes wearing clogs a splinterless experience. A worker feeds sticks of poplar into a bandsaw, careful to toss any pieces with defects. The blade slices the wood into blocks called blanks. The factory uses vinyl patterns like this one to create the shape of the shoe. There's a pattern for each size of every clog style. A worker locks one into a duplication machine called the shaper. Then right next to it, two blanks. This tracer moves over the shape of the pattern. The wheel on the left copies the tracer's movements exactly, its blades shaving the wood as it moves up and down. There's only one pattern loaded, yet the machine carves out a pair of shoes. That's because the blocks of wood spin in opposite directions while the blades chip away at them essentially creating mirror image copies. That allows the machine to carve out both a right and left shoe simultaneously. Now for the instep. A worker positions the blanks onto what's called a dual action boring machine. The center rod is called a tasker. Its rolling head follows the curves inside the pattern. The spoon bits on either side of it copy the tasker's movements, gradually carving out the inside of the shoes. Now they shift the angle so the spoon bits can get in deeper. They bore all the way to the front of the shoe. Then workers employ this very high-tech maneuver to remove the wood chips. They lay the shoes on racks to dry out the wood, then cut off the knobs at the toe with a bandsaw while inspecting for flaws that may have come out during the drying phase. A disc sander grinds down the knob on the heel and refines the shape of the toe. They work with a barrel sander to smooth out the opening then switch to a balloon sander. The air-filled rubber sack inside flexes to the shape of the shoe as it sands. Now for the final step. An artist lays carbon paper on the shoe and a pattern on top of that. Then she traces the pattern. The carbon sheet transfers the design to the wood. Now she goes over the design with a wood burner. She changes tips and varies the temperature according to the size and depth of the lines and curves she burns. This design commemorates Holland, Holland, Michigan that is, in the United States. The artist now uses water-based paints to enhance the scene with color. She applies three coats of a water-based varnish to preserve the artwork and help keep the shoes clean. While most clog-wearing farmers opt for a plainer version, true clogaholics prefer a bit more pizzazz. But leave crafting them to the experts, because they leave big shoes to fill.